You want to write a paper in a weekend. Well, you can, but there are three main steps. First are three preliminary steps that you have to take. The second is four aspects of the writing sequence. And the third is reference managing. And there's two parts to this. So let's start from the preliminary stages. The first thing you want to do is review your previous notes and relevant research. So here you want to look at the notes, any other drafts that you might have had, any key articles that you've already read, and get a clear sense of what you have done already and what is also missing. Because when you're writing a research paper, what you have to remember is that there has to be unique information. There has to be new information that you haven't seen before, that has not been provided for in literature. So it's at this stage really important to, for you to determine and look through everything that is already out there and everything that you have already done and actually gaps in the literature that still exist that you can discuss within your paper. The second step is to conduct a focus literature search. Now you need to do this as soon or as close as your publishing or your writing time as possible because if you've done your literature search let's say a year ago and now you're going to write things can change in a year so you need to do another lit search just before you start writing. So let's say you're going to start writing on the Saturday. You can do a quick search on Saturday morning or even on the Friday evening if you have time. The third step is to clarify the paper's purpose and aims. So in this stage, you want to decide on what the goals are for your paper, the journals that you're going to submit it to, and also who your audience is going to be. And what this will do is it will help when you come to write, but it will also help to make sure that your tone and your approach is appropriate for who you are writing for. Now, let's say you have some new research papers that pop up out of the search that you have to read really quickly. You're not going to be able to do this in just the weekend. So what you can do is use AI tools like Unriddle. Unriddle is an AI platform that is for researchers, for students and for scientists. And what it helps you do is quickly understand papers, books, PDFs, lectures online, YouTube videos, and it allows you to write and cite using that information from AI and keeping everything organized. You can very quickly understand any research paper. You can ask as many questions as needed. You can really find the information from the research paper and get a good summary of the results and the missing information in the gap in literature within seconds. Now, this is an absolute game changer. So let's take a new research paper that I haven't looked at yet and let's use Unriddle to try to find some key information and extract some key results that I'm going to need to use when I'm writing my paper this weekend. When you start using Unriddle, there are three different ways that you can begin, but I'm going to just begin by importing a PDF research paper because I want to try to understand it as quickly as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm beginning by using the quick action, which is the research paper breakdown. And what this is going to do is break down this research paper into things like the title, the methods, the limitations. These are characteristics of the paper that would have taken me absolutely absolutely ages to get together and I just don't have that kind of time when I'm trying to write a paper in a weekend. But I do want some more detail on the key results. I'm writing a literature review so I need to make sure that I have a quick outline that is a topic based off of obviously this research paper and again you can see a really clear outline of what kind of subtopics I should be speaking about um, if I'm writing about this research paper. Now you can then begin to write notes. So click on the right hand side, I can start writing notes and start kind of keeping what I've read and things that I've understood in one place. Another really cool thing is that you can share. So if you're collaborating or if you're working with other people, chat with them so they can see the questions you've asked and kind of the output as well. And then last but not least, I can also look at the graph menu. So this allows me to look at all of my research papers in one place and hopefully bring out some new connections and some new um, maybe relationships that I hadn't noticed uh, otherwise. And by the way, the free plan does include 250 AI words per day, five uploads per day, one recording that you can upload per day, and 120 pages per upload. So this is actually quite a lot that's offered to you with even just the free plan. And of course, there are paid plans as well. I'll leave uh, the link to try it down below with a discount code that you can use um, and hopefully you'll really enjoy it. I'm a huge fan of Unriddle. I've mentioned it a lot on this channel. It's one of the leading and most powerful AI tools that allow you to really interrogate research papers and it really feels like it's made for academics. So if you have tried it out, then leave me a comment down below.
Now that we've done the preliminary stuff, let's move on to the writing sequence. Now, as I said earlier, we're not writing from start to end. We're going to be writing in a slightly different sequence that hacks it a little bit to help you write quickly. So number one, we're going to start with the methods and the materials. So here you write the methods section first. This is really straightforward. It's really factual. All you need to do is describe how the research was conducted. There's no thought behind it. There's not really any analysis or critique. It's just a matter of listing what you have done, what you have used. You should really have this somewhere if you've written a report or if you've, written, if you've done like a poster before for a conference, the methods should be written somewhere. They're very similar for past papers that you might have written. So this can take you a couple of hours or even less um, of just writing the methods. The second is moving on to the results and the discussion. Here you're writing the results based on the findings and also then the discussion in interpreting your data. It needs to make sure that it follows the order of your figures so in the results if you've spoken about experiment A first, then in the discussion, discuss experiment A first as well. The third part is writing the introduction. You want to explain the purpose of your study and provide relevant background to frame your research. So this is where the information that you pulled out of the literature review that you did earlier and any other information that you've gathered in the last couple of weeks or months or years of doing this research, you pull it all together and you write it in the introduction. Now, the reason why you write it last is because you really need to consider what the discussion is and what the key results are as to what you're going to be speaking about because something might have come up in the results that you didn't expect. And so having the um, introduction written last means that you're approaching it with the right kind of mindset, knowing what the gap in literature is that you have filled. Then step four is to conclude with clear bullet points, writing the conclusion, summarizing the key findings and implications of your study. This needs to be really brief for a paper. It doesn't have to be more than a small paragraph. So it needs to be really brief, straight to the point, um, ticking all the boxes, making sure that the reader understands exactly what the take home message is. Now, let me show you how I'm going to transform a quite basic basic piece of text to something a lot more impressive using Unriddle. So this is the introduction that I have written by myself and I want to now start to improve it and enhance it using Unriddle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, can you summarize this introduction section and think about a journal in mind when you do it? Because I kind of just wrote it as is, but I want it to sound a lot more cleaner and a lot more concise. And as you can see, it has done exactly that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm then going to try to find some citations, um, maybe try to find some uh, literature that can support what I've said. And you can choose from your library or you can choose from the online database. Go for the online database and you can see that there are relevant papers that are being pulled out and you can add these to your library, but you can also cite them directly and you can change, by the way, the format of this citation. So that's this is something that you can do really quickly, um, just finding citations and being able to evidence what you've said in your text. Now, once I've done that, I can then move on to the next section. Now, in the next section, I'm going to go to the actions and I'm going to say, let's talk to this section because I really know that I want to try to find some critique uh, about this topic that I would it would help to enhance uh, the overall text and discussion so i've asked for some critique and as you can see it's given me some information about um iq gap one which is a protein and sort of the correlation and the significance and the processes and the methods and hopefully i can that can give me a good idea as to some things that i can discuss for the critique that will help to improve and enhance um this paragraph I then want to go to the third paragraph and again go to the actions and I can choose what I want to do here and I'm going to say improve. So it's just going to improve it for me whilst keeping the meaning. I can also do something like expand, shorten, paraphrase. These are all things that you can do really quickly that keep and maintain the meaning uh, whilst uh, improving the text. So with expand, it's expanded quite a lot, but please don't just copy and paste this. Use it as a way to think about uh, methods and kind of topics as to how you can expand your text. Uh, you can also change, of course, the formatting, um, the lists and, and things like that. You can also change the referencing formatting as well. So you can go from Harvard uh, to APA, etc. really quickly. And the last stage, but not the least, is reference management. 
So first you need to compile all of your references and this has to be done in the final phase because it's after you've written the introduction. You also format them and you ensure that they follow the required citation style for your journal. Uh, this is really important because every journal has a slightly different style that they require. If you don't match the standard requirements, your paper will most likely be rejected. And then secondly, double check all of the citations in your research paper. So before you submit the paper at the end of the weekend, now that you've written the paper, take a look at the citations and double check that it matches up in your text. A lot of the time when you're writing, it can happen very easily where you've missed out a citation or you haven't referenced it correctly or you haven't cited at all because you were you know just quickly writing or quickly reading so just having everything match up together um, is a good last step to have I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I hope that it showed you how you can write a paper really quickly it does not have to take months and months of time if you have all the information you've collated your diagrams your graphs your data once all of that is there it's just a matter of bringing it all together and putting it in one place and that can be done in a weekend if you liked the demonstration that i gave you of unriddle then i'll leave the link for uh, it down below you can go try it for free um, there are also paid plans which i'll leave the link for down below as well and uh, let me know if you try it let me know if you use it and what, what you think about it i'd love to hear from you and uh, yeah i'll see you in my next video